Michael Peterson's home in Durham, North Carolina, that was made famous and the groundbreaking documentary, The Staircase, has sold once again. Now, for those that aren't familiar with that case, with that documentary, let's do a little quick flashback here. The Staircase was an amazing documentary uh, into the legal side of a high-profile murder case. Now, what it was focused on was the tragic death of Kathleen Peterson, Michael Peterson's wife. She was found at the bottom of a set of stairs in their home. Uh, seemingly, allegedly, she had fallen down the stairs. There's several theories that went around with this. Uh, Michael Peterson claims that he was out by their pool, which is like outside of the house, you know, kind of around the corner. Uh, and he says that he was out there in fall weather till late at night. He comes in and finds her dead at the bottom of the stairs. Now, the state will go on to say, look, and they'll show evidence of a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes of this psh, happy marriage. Uh, the biggest thing being that they found letters to male escorts that Michael Peterson was trying to hook up with. So the state says, no, you know what we think happened? We think Kathleen went upstairs to use his computer to send a work email, saw the stuff, and then confronted him, and he freaked out and killed her. And that's pretty much what Kathleen's family thinks too. Now, another theory that came out that a lot of people love to poke fun at at this point, uh, which is very out there, uh, and actually Michael Peterson's neighbor came up with this. He is an attorney or was. He's probably retired by now. Uh, but it's called the owl theory. And essentially what it's saying is, you know, look, we think that an owl kind of chased her into the house, attacked her, and she was grabbing at her hair because when she was found, she had a thing of her hair in her hand. And they did find microscopic and I mean microscopic owl feathers in her hair. And so that was the other theory. Nonetheless, it became this huge mystery as to what really happened to Kathleen to put her at the bottom of those stairs. Now, Michael Peterson would eventually be charged with her murder and he would be tried for her murder. And that is where the documentary team steps in. They reached out to him and shockingly, he was like, yeah, you know what? You can come in and film every aspect of this. You can film my family, the courtroom, behind the scenes, my attorney did it. I mean, everything. I'm sure they left some stuff out, but nonetheless. And a huge part of that was they were in this house in Durham, North Carolina, the Durham, North Carolina mansion, uh, filming the family interacting and whatnot. It had this very eerie, odd vibe to it. But for those that are interested in law and court cases, I mean, this is like unprecedented at its time. It gave you the insight into how these cases are set up. I still feel like I've never seen a documentary like this that really just struck this hard. Now, Michael Peterson would be eventually sent to prison for the rest of his life for the murder of Kathleen. Again, case doesn't end there. His charges were eventually overturned because Dwayne Deaver, the alleged blood splatter expert, though I would not really call him an expert at this point, it turns out that Dwayne Deaver is literally lied not only in Michael Peterson's case, but numerous cases. And so they have to overturn all these convictions, not just Peterson's, but Peterson's is one of those. Now, the issue you have with this is then any of that testimony is no good. Now, this would result in Peterson getting basically his whole case overturned. He gets back out on bond again. And this is where that case stands for the longest time. Now, at this point, he doesn't have the money to move back into that Durham home. They already saw that long ago, and we'll get into that one second. So that happens, things go on, and eventually he pleads out to the Alfred plea, which is essentially him saying, I'm not trying to say I'm guilty, but I get that if we went to court, you would probably find me guilty again. And so they did time served, and free he goes. So so there is that. So let's get into the house because the house to me, it's a beautiful home and watching the documentary, I was like, wow, that's just, it's such an amazing house. I've actually ridden by it. It's not far from where I live. It's a beautiful neighborhood. It's in Durham, North Carolina. It's easy access to so much stuff in that area. Now, like I said, in the documentary, this house became like a character of its own because it did feel like a creepy murder mystery setting. The house is in Durham, North Carolina and the forest Hills neighborhood. It has five bedrooms, six bathrooms. Now, one of the weird parts to it is this, and right now I'm probably showing pictures on the video of the house that, for the listing that it had. 
they don't show any of the pictures of the staircase where this happened. There's two huge staircases in this house. There's the beautiful one that actually Kathleen and Michael got married on. They have pictures on it. And then there's this other staircase, which is like what I consider like a utilitarian staircase. And it goes upstairs. It comes out in the kitchen, I believe. There is one picture that shows like the ending of it uh, or like the landing that comes out, but they don't show the actual, you know, staircase itself. So there's that. But while the documentary is going on um they were filming this in the house now soon after the fall the murder whatever you want to call it happened they boarded up the staircase blood intact everything there so that everyone could see it and the jurors would actually come to the house and get to see this for themselves most people when they see the amount of blood in this staircase they're like there's no way she fell there's no way she fell but what was just so odd about it is I was like, how are they sitting there going about their lives? You got to do what you got to do. But they're going about their lives with this horrifying scene, like in the next room. It was just very weird to me. It was very creepy and it was very mood setting. Now, originally Michael Peterson bought this house back in 92. It comes in like right under 9,500 square feet. He paid 600,000 for it, which I mean, is a lot of money, but compared to this day, it's like, oh wow, you got the house for 600 grand. So him and Kathleen live in it, yada, 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 life goes on, all this stuff happens, her untimely death comes about, you know, and he is convicted. So soon after he's convicted, they list the house for $1.175 million. Now, this is 2003 that this takes place. So this is, you know, a hot minute after 92. As you can imagine, they cannot give this house away. So it finally sold the following July for $640,000. So literally $40,000 on top of what he paid for it like a decade later. I mean, this is bad. Now, the new owners, they renovated it and they relisted it in 2007. And so they essentially not flipped it overnight, but they flipped it. It sold the next year to a very big name psychic. And I can only imagine like the energy stuff that was going on in this house. If this psychic was real and whatnot, I could pick up on energies. I'm like, my God, why would you want to buy this house? I mean, the mojo in there had to be like upsetting. Now the psychic put it on the market this past July for $1.9 million and it just sold August of this year, August 10th, 2020, for 1.6 million. So hefty margins they're making on this at this point. So Michael Peterson seems to be the only one that got the short end of the stick, but I do not feel bad about that. Now, another claim to fame that this house had, and this was before The Handmaid's Tale as we know it now on Hulu. This was like the way back when to like one of the original movies about it. The house was used in 1990 to film The Handmaid's Tale. And there's actually a lot of pictures in it. And I'm going to be putting some of them up here where they use the staircase that Kathleen was murdered on or fell down or whatever happened to her on there. Uh, but it's very weird to see this movie take place. Apparently the movie didn't do that well, but it is based on Margaret Atwood's book. So I'll be curious to see what the new owners do, how they do it. The house essentially looks just the same as we saw it in the staircase. I often wonder, does Michael Peterson drive by? He still lives here in Durham. So he lives on the bottom floor of a condo or a town home or apartment or something like that um you know people say they see him at the gym they see him here and there and whatnot so i'm curious you know does he ride through his old neighborhood is he still talk to any of the old neighbors if they're still there one will never know and only he knows what went down that night in that house in that staircase if you want to see more of my videos on other subjects other cases and other crimes just click the playlists that are popping up i appreciate you watching and i'll talk to you soon